Hello everyone, welcome back to Jack Scraps and thank you for joining me today for part three of our Doghouse Exploding Box tutorial. If you have missed parts one and two, I will have them linked down below for you. And re excuse the kitty. And remember the full reveal is in part one. So let's get to it. What I'm going to do now is to show you how to create a uh, regular lid for an exploding box and what you would need to do is take um, the color cardstock of your choice cut it down to six and one eight by six and one eight we'll put that on our scoreboard and we're going to score at one inch all the way around so at one inch score all the way down turn it once to the left score at one inch Turn once to the left, score at one inch, and then one more time, turn to the left, and score at one inch. Now that we have our lid scored, what we need to do is some cuts. In the first block in the lower right hand corner, you'll see a score line about one inch in, and you're going to cut all the way up to the first score line. You're going to rotate the card and cut again on the score line up to the first score mark. Rotate again and cut. Rotate one more time. Now that we have all of the lines cut, we can go ahead and burnish. Now if you were going to go ahead and make a regular explosion box and create a lid for that instead of a doghouse, you would do the same steps that we just did and I would recommend decorating your lid prior to putting it all together. So that's what I've done here just for the purposes of this tutorial. And then now what we're going to do for the first tab in the upper right hand corner we would add some adhesive. Now you can use tape or wet adhesive, I'm using wet. We would fold this over and add the first layer to it. And we're going to create the box lid doing this. Make sure you square it off. Then we'll move over to the next one and repeat the same steps. Folding this down, bending this over, and squaring off. Now you could use your bone folder in between each time. It's hard to show you. And here's our last tab. It's already on the inside, so I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the process. And put those two together. You have to hold it for a moment just so that it catches. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry a moment and then I'll show you what it looks like with a regular box lid. Okay, so we have our exploding box here now, oh, let me tell you, um, one thing that I noticed when pulling this side up, I noticed that these uh, flaps from the photo flip would catch on the ribbon and then it would buckle them and then you couldn't really close it. So I may have to put a paper clip or something here to keep them flat or remember to hold them down and put this up otherwise they're going to get all messed up okay so you pull all the sides up you take your lid and put it on top so this is what it would look like with just a regular lid oh i see now i should have moved my happy 
to be lower. And the back side. Now I'll probably do some additional decorating, but I'll show you that later. Yep, that's too bad. So then that's how that would work. Yeah, okay. Now on to transforming the lid into like the doghouse top. The next thing we're going to do is create like part of a hinge, if you will, and it will look like this. It will be attached to our lid to start creating the roof of the doghouse. So to do that, what we need to do is cut a piece of cardstock, and this is going to be six and three eighths by four and one eighth. Bring out your scoreboard, and on the long end of your cardstock, score at one, turn it around 180 degrees, and score at one again. Now, on the long end of the cardstock, we want to score at one, and we want to score at five and one eighths, or you can flip it around and score it at one. At this point, what we want to do is have it long ways on our table, and we're going to use a ruler to find the center between the first score line and the last score line going long ways. So it's, I'm using the Tim Holtz ruler here and once you find it, then you make a mark across the score line that's going long ways across your paper. Okay, so what we did is found the center between this score line and this score line right here. It comes to about 2 and 1 sixteenths. It's going to be a little bit odd, but trust me, this is what we need. Okay, so taking our paper and turn it diagonally, we're going to kind of do this the same way we created the milk carton. Um, if you remember, I used the Fashionista uh, design collection and we created a little shopping box. And what we're going to do, where these two score lines intersect, we're gonna go from the center of that diagonally up to the line that we just made. Okay. And you can go all the way off the paper if you want, it doesn't matter. Now let's turn this to the other side and we're going to go over to this intersecting score line. We're going to score from here all the way to the center of that mark that we made. Now your paper should look like this. It'll have one triangular design here in the center. Now what we're gonna do is, if you have a one inch ruler, that would be perfect, or a three fourths inch ruler, that'll work well. What I'm gonna do is use the Tim Holtz ruler and I'm gonna go in to an inch and I'm lining up my one inch line going long ways with my diagonal mark. What we want to do is create a parallel line following our two lines that we just created. So going one inch in, I'm going to go over here and make a line. We're scoring a line right there. We're going to do the same thing on this side lining up our ruler on the diagonal line, we're going to then create 
a line on the outside. And here we have the one inch margin between the two lines. I'm going to hold this diagram so you can see in the reflection. What we're going to do now is cut out all of this section. Here is our last score line that we made diagonally. From that point on, we're cutting all of this out. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Cut all of that out. Down here, we're going to cut up and out. We're going to cut these little blocks out. Okay? Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is go up to the second score line that we made diagonally and I'm going to cut across that. I'm going to go over to the next side and cut that off as well. So if you're looking at your page, you're cutting out these two corners, okay? The next thing I'm going to do is cut out these two blocks. And actually, I found that you could... Oh, we need that there. Yeah, you can cut off this entire section if you like, or you can leave this little tab. So I'm going to cut this whole thing off and do the same thing on the other side. So once again, this will look like this when you're done cutting it out. The next thing we want to do is where we have our diagonal score line, we want to fold that back or forward, I found forward is better, and crease. We're going to do the same thing with the other diagonal line. Fold that forward and crease. At that point we've created like a little diamond shape at the top and we're going to cut one side. It doesn't matter which side, just cut it to the first score line. So what this is, is a hinge that we can glue to the back side of this one. What's going to happen is we're going to create like a little triangle that will look like this once we glue these two pieces together. The bottom piece here will be glued onto the outside of our box lid. The next thing we want to do once we have this all cut out is to cut a piece that will fit on the front side of that. Now you're going to cover all of this. So what I thought might be easy is you take your decorative piece of paper, you line it up, fold one side down, and then just kind of trace the out, oops, trace the outside. Pull this one back, this one down, and trace this one. So then now we cut out the lines that we just created. You may have to trim to get it to fit, so just keep that in mind. But I found this is the best way to get a close fit. So we'll line up our piece and see how it fits. Fits pretty good actually. There's just a little bit off the bottom that we should trim. Yeah, and then we'll be good to go. So you could glue that piece down and once you glue that down you can glue your tab 
down as well. Okay, you're making a point here, you're squaring that off and pressing down. And again, you could use your bone folder here. And now we have one side. Before we connect the two pieces to the box top to start creating our roof, I wanted to mention that I made some changes and I thought I'd share those with you. I changed the front and the back. I took away the wood. If you remember on the inside, you'll be able to see. I had the wood on the front and the back and then the floral on the two sides. There was just something that I wasn't liking, so I changed it to be the floral. And I also added the ribbon all the way across because sometimes dog houses do have the grass in between where they go in and out. I'm liking this much better. And then I moved my happy sign to the inside and I like that there as well. I also rearranged the um, little flip here to where it is now facing inward. So now they are all going in the right direction. And I added this paper clip so that it wouldn't get hung up on the ribbon here when we pull it up like that. So that's all working well now. And I'm uh, really happy that I changed the front and the back. So when I did that, I also changed the paper. I had wood paper here before as well, and I changed that to be the floral. Okay, so that's the updates. Now what we're going to do is attach these pieces to our lid. When we add the glue to these pieces, we're only going to add it to the inch strip here, not to the triangle part. So just line those up on both ends and press. So these will almost be sitting on top of the lid. Now that we have our end pieces on to the roof, what I've done is added some decorative paper to both sides of the um, flaps that we folded over. Um, I have an idea and I'll show you in a moment. Um, so now we need to create the piece that goes down over the roof to complete it. So you're gonna cut a piece of cardstock that corresponds with the rest of the colors that you're using. This is seven and a fourth by a four and um, three fourths, or you could even do seven eighths, it's up to you. And it all depends on what punch you use. So what I've done is I've punched out one edge of my paper, and I'm going to also do the other side. Now that we have both sides punched out, and that's on the long end, what we're going to do is put it into our scoreboard, or use your ruler and bone folder. And we're going to make a score mark. Here's an example. And we're doing like a fourth of an inch here where we score. So you put it in and at the fourth of an inch mark, you score all the way down and you flip it over and do the other side. So now it looks like this. The next thing we need to do is score down the middle, and I found it's easier to just the two ends together and make a little pinch in the center and then come back to your scoreboard and score. It actually comes out to three and five eighths. Now 
Now we need to burnish all of our lines. And we're going to fold backward on the score line. Now where the center score line is, we are going to make a cut up to the score line that goes across. So it's just that little piece right here where we make the fold. So see, you can turn this now like this shape and you will have the shape of a roof. Now what you would do is take the top of your exploding box, you would add glue to all four of these little tabs, and then you would take your roof piece that we just made, put the score line on top of the center here, and fold these over, and then press where we've added the adhesive. What you would also do is where we made that little cut is add a little adhesive there and push down and then that will hold that down. And then your roof would look like this. The way I created the roof piece is so that there would be a little bit of dimension on the front and the back side so it won't be the exact size of this piece. It will hang over just a little bit on each side. That way it'll look really good, like some dimension on there. Now, the way that I thought about doing is adding Velcro dots to each of these panels and putting the lid on, uh, the roof on. That way you could take this off, you could use this as a secret hiding place and put something special in there. So that's what I'll be doing. Okay, so I've added my Velcro dots here and there, and I'm going to take my roof piece and add it to the center here. I want to even this out to where I have a little bit of hangover on each side, and then when I'm ready, go ahead and press down. And what I'm doing here is pressing down so that I can add the Velcro to the back side of this black piece of cardstock. And then I can lift off and I have my pieces aligned. To decorate the roof of the house, what I wanted to do was cover each panel on top as well as add a little bit of color to the edge that we created. So I would take a piece of my decorative cardstock and it was measured three and five eighths by four and three fourths. Now I made it bigger than the actual piece that I needed because I wanted to use my punch again and this is an EK success. I don't know the name of it anyways. It's like a doily punch. And I would punch the short ends. Do that all the way down on both sides. Put it into my scoreboard and I would go to the line that was very close to the end of where the punch dipped down into the paper. It wasn't a fourth of an inch like we did earlier. It would be just the closest I could get. So you see it's just right under it. And then what I did was actually cut this off. I would take then the cutoff piece, I would line it up with the decorative edge, and I didn't want it to be exact like on top so you couldn't see the black, I wanted it to be staggered so that you could see the black, that's why I made this cutoff very thin, and then I would glue that down. And then, of course, I would do that on the other side and glue, cut that off and glue it down, and then I would put this down in the center. Now, what I also did after that was use this Park Lane Rose Bouquet Embossing Folder. It's so pretty, it has roses all over it. And I ran that through my machine. 
I ran the centerpiece through the machine, not the little cutoffs. And then I added it to the top of the roof. So this is what it turned out to look like. I really love that I chose the paper that had the stripes on it because of course you see stripes on roofs. And then embossing it with the roses made it get, it just gave it so much more texture. I absolutely love that and I hope you can see that really well. And I love how the edging turned out. I love having the black show up through it out it all. So I really loved how this turned out. And then I even lined the inside of the roof, just the two spots. I didn't do the overhang again. And then put my Velcro dots there on top. So loving how that turned out. And that concludes all of the construction for the exploding box. So that was our exploding dog house. Um, tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed it and I appreciate you joining me. See you next time.